Hi everyone, welcome to Northern Zen Yoga. This is Sandra speaking and today's little video is just about what type of things should I use in a yoga class when I'm just beginning or I have really limited movement in my hips and my body and some of the things that people are doing in yoga classes are not quite uh, attainable for me. So I'm just going to go through a few of the things that you should purchase if you would like to continue doing yoga classes and make things a little easier and a little more comfortable for you. The very, very first thing you should invest in is a block. So blocks come in lots of different shapes, sizes, and um, colors. And these are very, very commonly bought in places like Marshalls, Winners. Um, those kind of stores, they're usually um, sporadically available and often in two packs. But even if you want to go online and order them from a yoga supply place, generally speaking, I would uh, recommend a four inch thick block as opposed to the three inch thick block, especially when you're beginning. I just find that a four inch block is a little more rigid, a little more uh, secure in pushing down into it and takes more abuse than the three inch block. Just my opinion. So this, this particular one is a foam block. They also come in cork. Cork blocks are much more expensive. They're probably twice as expensive and I've even seen them in wood. Uh, wood blocks are great if you're an advanced yoga practitioner and you're basically just using it to just guide yourself into the right position but not really needing it for support of any kind. So the foam ones are much easier on your hands. They're a little bit more squishy, but not so squishy that you will feel unstable with them. But it's more comfort in pushing your knuckles and your fingers down into the block. So first thing you're going to want to invest in is at least one yoga block. Two is better, especially if you're having issues with balance. The reason being is that you can very easily go into some of the more difficult postures if you have the blocks, one on either side of you, to place your hands on and use as balance points. So keep that in mind. If they come in a two-pack, go for it and get two yoga blocks. The other thing when you're first beginning, and especially if you're very rigid in the hips and the back, is to invest in a belt. You can also buy these in any place that sells sporting goods as well as the places that you would find blocks and mats in. Um, I've even seen them in dollar stores. So blocks, mats, belts, very commonly found. Walmart carries them. So have a look at them. The longer the better, especially the, the more stiff your body is, simply because you would want to be able to loop it around your feet and then hang on to it and be able to wrap it around your hands for security. So this one particular one I think is like about a 10 foot uh, strap. That's a really good great length for me because um, when I'm demonstrating to people how to use this in a complete uh, ability to, to stretch out your legs and things, it gives lots of extra strap to uh, play around with. Now they do come shorter uh, they come in, um, I've seen them in four foot, five foot, six foot lengths. I recommend those for people who have been doing yoga for a while and just want the strap to help get them go deeper into a stretch. The longer ones are better for you if you're just beginning yoga. So they might be a little tiny bit more money, but it's worth it and they last forever pretty much. So it's a good investment long term. The other thing you would like to have in your yoga practice is a blanket. Now, I got this one in Mexico. You don't have to have a Mexican blanket, but uh, it doesn't have to be a huge blanket and it doesn't have to be a really thick, cushy one. You want something that you have a lot of versatile use for and that if you folded it up, it would be about this size, about this thick. The reason why you would like to have a blanket for yoga is, among other things, you can sit on it nice cushy place to sit. Uh, the other things you can do with it is you can 
use it for your head if you're in um, a reclining position and you feel a little bit too much tension on the neck you can use it for that a lot of my videos will ask you to use a blanket for comfort in different areas for example if we're doing any work on the back you may want to lay this down in a, and maybe fold it up a couple of times so that your backbone your, your spinal bones your hip bones even could rest on it uh, just for a little extra squish the other thing you can use a blanket for is for your knees now I don't recommend it as the most ideal solution to having a problem with kneeling down and the pressure on your knees in a kneeling position because depending on the blanket it might not be that comfortable itself but the best thing you can use it for is for Shavasana during Shavasana, your body might start to cool down a little quickly, especially if, if this type of year when you've got the air conditioning on, and that might be the exact time your air conditioning uh, starts to blow. So putting the blanket over you just makes you feel much more relaxed, much more warm, keeps the body heat in, and allows your muscles to cool down gently as opposed to quickly. So with regard to the knees, there's lots of products out there I don't happen to have any here um, at this time. Uh, if I do grab something, when next time I see something at the dollar store, I'll have it for you to show you. But one of the things one of the viewers let me know was that there are at the dollar stores these pads that are about this long, about this wide, and they're somewhere around an inch thick, and they're meant for gardening and for kneeling down in the ground in uh, doing your gardening. And I'm sure you could also use it for kneeling down to do washing floors and whatever jobs you would like to do that require kneeling and need a little bit of cushiness that your mat is not supplying. So they're very cheap. Check it out. You can use those for your knees. Of course, you can also go online or in sporting goods stores and find specialty pads that you can either put on your knees permanently, like you just wrap it around, with a, with a kind of strap or something and they're a gel type pad or they just are little gel pads that you can just throw down and put your knees on. Those work really well too but of course they're more expensive. So these are just a few things that you can look at to make your life a little bit more comfortable when you're doing your yoga practice. So for now I'm going to leave it at that and if I come across anything else that I find really really exciting or useful for you to help modify your practice, I'll let you know. And of course, the most important thing that you can grab if you find that getting down on the floor in itself is the challenge, is a chair. So check out my chair yoga videos and you may find that doing yoga in a chair is gonna be the thing that really helps you to be more comfortable in your practice. So, till next time, see you later, bye for now.